Okay, yeah. There it is. Alright, we already watched the video. Alright. So, an easy way to remember the difference between international classification of disease, ICD codes, and current procedural terminology, CPT codes, is that ICD is the diagnostic codes of what's wrong. So that's the patient's condition. The CPT is the procedure codes and how it's fixed. A modifier is a two-digit code used for unusual circumstances. As we talked about with Taylor, she had to have anesthesia multiple times for a root canal. Then she had to get a pill, she had a shot, and she had laughing gas. So that would be in your book, a modifier 23. The, besides being an essential part of coding, any type of doctor visit, CPT procedure codes are the codes that you would charge for. When you enter a claim, you will list the procedure code along with the proper diagnosis. And to tie this back to your CMS 1500, that's going to be 21 and 24. Sorry about that. Again, to bring this back to where you understand it, CMS on your CMS 1500 ICD are going to be on 21. The FCPT are going to be on 24. So this means that these are the codes that are paid by the insurance company. An insurance company won't pay just because you tell them that the patient had a sore throat. You have to include the CPT code for each procedure performed so that the doctor can get paid for each component of the office visit. So if somebody comes in with strep throat, how many of us have gotten tested for that? Yeah, me too. They stick a, a swab down your throat and they culture it. It's a rapid fast test. You get the test results right there. Do you have strep throat? Most of us already know if we have it or not. Most of the time, well, all the time that I've gone, I've never had it. But they always charge me for it because they did it. Yes, I am that difficult person that when I go to the doctor's office, I question you about why are you doing this. And <laughs> I asked the lady one time, she was so mad at me. I said, I don't have strep throat. I have a sinus infection. I just need an antibiotic. She said, well, we won't know that until we test you with strep throat. I said, so basically you're going to charge me for a negative test because it's going to be negative. And she was like, well, you don't have to do it. And she, oh, she was getting mad at me. And I said, well, I choose not to do it then because I know I don't have strep throat. Every time I go to the doctor for a sinus infection, oh, we have to take you for strep. It's negative. But my whole point is, whatever procedure is done, you have to charge for it. Now, if you are just feeling so gracious and generous out of the kindness of your heart and you want to give somebody something free, that's on y'all. You keep giving people stuff for free, you ain't going to make no money. All right. Medical insurance specialist locates and verifies procedure codings, using them to report to physician services. Each reported service must match up to a diagnostic code, which supports the procedure as necessary to investigate or treat the patient's condition. Sometimes it is necessary to include a modifier. Make sure that you put a star by modifier with the procedure code. This changes the meaning of the procedure code because you're giving more information when you have to use one. 
For those of you at home, if you have not watched the video, look in the front cover of your CPT manual, and that's where you will find most or the majority of modifiers. Ah, and I got ahead of myself because there it is right there. The modifiers helped the insurance company to understand the service that was provided at the office by including additional information. Instead of you having to write all of it out, it's designated by numbers and modifiers. Modifiers are also sometimes necessary to make sure your claims are paid in full. For me, I have to use a modifier 59. And my, my procedures are separate and individual. Because if I don't use a 59 modifier, guess what? I'm getting zero dollars back on that what I did. I've already told you to look on the inside cover of your CPT manual, and that's where you find your modifier. The CPT manual is complete with hundreds of pages and thousands of codes, but you do not have to memorize them, which I have stated before. Once you become accustomed to reading the codes, descriptions, and finding the codes that you need, Using this manual will become part of your daily routine. Actually, that is not true. You need to learn how to use this manual to get through the exam and get through the class. But once you start working in this field, you're only going to use a certain set of codes. I am a chiropractor, so I only use rehab codes. I don't use heart codes. I don't use gyneco gynecological codes. You're only going to use those that are specific to your company, facility, or profession. Now, if you come across something that's very odd, yes, by all means, use the book. But as far as you having to use it all the time, more than likely your computer systems will already have it for you. Another important thing is to note that most of your procedure codes will be included in your doctor's encounter form, which is the super bill that I showed you in class. It's a list of all the commonly used procedures and diagnostic codes. This form is what you will use to enter the codes for a medical claim. So, E&M codes. These are the first set of codes that you're going to come across in your CPT manual. These are basically the doctor visits. You may have noticed on previous lists that there are small set codes with another, within another set. These are evaluation management codes, also known as E&M. So if you hear me say E&M code, I'm talking about evaluation and management codes. These describe normal patient, office visits, and services, and are included in almost every outpatient doctor visit. Please do not get confused. In this class, we do not and will not code for hospital care. We will not. Hospital coding is totally different from office coding. We don't even use a CMS 1500. You use a UBO4. It's a totally different system. So don't get confused. You are strictly, specifically working for an office for this. All right, so then you have your category two and three codes. Two codes we don't use, that's to help track performance. Scroll down. Evaluation management, E and of codes. We do not use category two. And in category three, our codes are made up in emerging technology services and procedures. These are not federally regulated codes, so you don't get paid for them. They're mainly used to keep the medical community up to date and supporting advancements in the medical community and healthcare technology. 
Knowing and understanding the many types of uses of CPT medical billing codes is fundamental part of being a successful medical coder. Ooh, okay, so y'all just listen to me because this is a lot. The CPT code set is a listing of descriptive terms, guidelines, and identifying codes for reporting medical services and procedures. The purpose of the CPT code set is to provide a uniform language that accurately describes medical, surgical, and diagnostic services. We were the last country to conform, the United States. Everybody else was in ICD-10 but us. So in 2015, they decided, okay, we're going to switch over to ICD-9. So mind you, I had been teaching this for two years, and then I had to switch my kids from ICD-9 to ICD-10. And they had to know both. So just be lucky. Just be lucky. Current procedural terminology codes are used nationwide by healthcare providers in order to effectively communicate what services were done by the medical staff. As a part of the healthcare development of certified procedural terminology code sets was developed by the American Medical Association in 1966. So this is going to be a universal language that you speak amongst all medical professionals. When you walk up to somebody that works at a clinic, it doesn't matter who they are. They know what CPT is and they know what ICD-10 is because we all use the same terminology. And, and you get to the point, well, what do you use for your ENM? Oh, we use, we typically use a 99201, but you know, 99201s don't pay very well. So we bumped it down for a minimal visit for 99202. You see how I did that? So that's, the way that you'll start talking because it's a universal language. Everybody, once you get it, you start understanding what they're talking about. Um, I don't think I want to go back over this. If I do, I'm going to go over really fast. Because these are the six sections of the CPT manual which we've already gone over in the video you have your e and m codes which are also known as evaluation and management and what this does is that it's breaking down to you per section per code what it is and what it does so e and m codes are 99201 to 99499 anesthesia has a whole lot of them and so the surgery. Surgery starts at 10.021 to 69.990. So that's a lot of codes. That's like 5,000 codes. Do you have to remember them? No, because you have the book in front of you. I do not want any of you to worry about taking the exam because you have an open book test. You are pretty much coding everything from the book. They're not asking you to memorize anything. They just want to know, can you use the book? That is the whole goal of this exam. So I'm going to kind of go through these fairly fast because this just is it describing each system as how they break down in the book. And always remember when you're doing your notes with Caduceus, anything purple is important. So you may want to put a star by it. Each section has its own important guidelines. It is important to get familiar with each section and its specific coding rules. The six primary sections are divided into subsections, and the subsections are divided into headings according to the type of test, service, or body system. So an overview. The CPT is going to provide a list of identifying and descriptive codes for reporting procedures and medical services. It is a universal language that describes medical, surgical procedures and services. So again, remember that it is this description of the procedure. It is a universal language shared within the healthcare profession.
This mask is killing me today. And some of these things are repetitive, so I'm going to try my best to get all of the gunk out. So with CPT codes, they are used to report services and procedures. We already know that. They're linked to the CMS, the uh, CMS 1500 by way of the ICD-10, which is the diagnosis. Codes justify the need for service or procedure. You just don't do things because you want to. There, ha there you have to be mindful of the changes that occur with CPT. Does anybody remember when these books are updated? Okay. October first of every year. October first of every year, and that is a certification question. CPT supports electronic data interchange. So you have your EDI, which is your computer-based patient. Then you have your computer or uh, your CPR or your electric electronic medical record. And then you have your EMC, which is your reference or research database. people in my dome. Okay, hold on guys. Let me see what I want you to get. Oh, okay. No, I have to solve this. So with category one, the procedure service is identified by five digit CPT code description and nomenclature, meaning there's only five numbers. There are only five numbers that you're going to find in CPT. Did I say letters? No. So you only want to have five numbers. The codes traditionally associated with CPT are organized into six sections. You've heard this several times, so do not forget that. Category two. I don't know why we keep doing this. Category two. Yeah, I don't know why we keep doing this because they just beat stuff to death. What it is this? Category two are the performance measures, and category three, emerging technology, which we discussed earlier, which is within the presentation. Okay, so this is just telling you which sections are in the book. And they finally put the abbreviation over here. It says ENM, which is Evaluation and Management Code. And just remember, do not lose your mind or anything like that. It's uh, that number six, it should say Medicine and Rehabilitation. Number six should say medicine and rehabilitation because there are codes in there that everybody can use, but it's under medicine and rehabilitation. Again, there are six sections. We have gone over this. You do not have to memorize it, but I do caution you that when you're doing case studies, that you need to pay attention and read the question. So the CPT code format is five digits. The CPT appendices or appendix, several of them. It contains uh, appendices located after the medicine section and the index. You should become familiar with changes that affect the practice and if they affect your code. This is where you can go to look them up. Appendix A gives you a detailed description of each CPT modifier. That's the other list. So you have a short list of modifiers in the front, but if you go to Appendix A in your CPT book, you will find a list of several more. 
Appendix B is the annual CPT coding changes, add and deleted revised CPT codes, and C are clinical examples for E&M section codes. We usually do these at the end of the school year, so I can see if you can identify 99201 and 222 and all those, if you can, if you can identify them appropriately. Uh, Appendix D or add-on codes, we typically don't use that. Uh, Appendix D, add-on codes, yeah, we typically don't use that. Appendix E, these are codes that are exempt from modifier 51. And 51 simply states multiple procedures. So if you go to Appendix E and you come to something that has more than one procedure, you go to here to make sure that you do not have to use a modifier 51. Appendix F is codes that exempt from modifier 63. And 63 are procedures formed on infants less than four kilograms. So a premature baby. G, you rarely have to use this unless you work in the anesthesiology department. It is a summary that includes moderate conscious sedation. So the person is half sleep. H is the alphabetic index of performance measures by clinical condition or topic. And it serves as a crosswalk to category two. So you can use a little map and move yourself over to see where you should be. Appendix I is genetics testing code modifier. And then Appendix J are electrodiagnostic medicine listing a sensory, motor, and mixed nerve. There's also a table that indicates the type of study and maximum of study. Generally performed is a, e, a needle EMG which is an electromyogram, nerve conduction studies, and other EMG studies. And from what I hear, they hurt because they take needles that are probably the half the size of a pen. Well, not probably that long. Probably the half the size of a pen, so that long. And they stick them in different nerves of your body, and they turn it on and ask, can you feel it? If you can't feel it, then you have a serious nerve dysfunction. If you can feel it, then it's not that bad. List of vascular families that is intended to assist in the selection first, second, third. Okay, no, we're not going to do that. But this is a blood vessel, so if you need to go look at that, there's a crosswalk of crosswalk of deleted to new CPT code. So if you get a new code because the book was updated, but you're trying to see what your old code would make that be, you would look at the old code to crosswalk it or match it to the new code. That's what a crosswalk means. And if you need more clarification, you can look at Appendix M. All right, so you guys get your book. Go ahead and open your book. It doesn't matter to what page. Oh, it's time for you to go. All right, so we'll stop here and start back up on Wednesday. Remember, you do not have class tomorrow. You do not have class tomorrow.